What's up guys? This is going to be another ramble before I release the video series on Max Park and how I do coaching. I uh, wasn't meant to be doing another ramble, however, something has happened. Uh, a certain Yu Sheng Du has broken the 3x3 world record with a single solve of 3.47. Pretty cool, but there's no video, and everyone's kind of freaking out. And people are probably going to be freaking out for the next month or so, and it's going to be really annoying and repetitive and... Did I mention annoying? I'll mention it again, it'll be annoying. So this ramble, normally my rambles are more for the like advanced cubers that can benefit from my high level advice. This one's gonna be more so for the, what's a nice way to put it? Less mature, less experienced, not as familiar with solving at the highest echelon, these sorts of cubers. This one's gonna be for you guys and it's gonna be from the perspective of someone who has solved for a while at the highest echelon. So, being a fast cuber and not filming yourself, sounds ridiculous right because you're so fast and you can get records and youtube views and stuff and yay and it's great and filming is fun and yay and youtube <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah sure um yeah but being a fast cuber and not filming yourself if you think about it it can be kind of reasonable and there are two key reasons why i think being fast and not filming yourself may be the best thing for you depending on what you really care about and what you really want out of cubing so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about two reasons why being a fast cuber and not filming yourself is a reasonable thing to do so that some of you kids can just calm down and be a little nicer to Yu Sheng Du and other fast cubers who choose not to film themselves. So f reason number one. Reason number one, filming yourself can add mental pressure in the sense that you're expecting yourself to get something worth uploading or viewing or just having documented. So there's that mental pressure and it can also be exacerbated when it's an event you're faster at or it can be exacerbated when it's a certain key solve in the average. So what do you really care about more? YouTube views or having results that you're proud of? What do you care about more? Having results that you're proud of filmed and documented or having a stronger mental game for competitions across the board? These are the kinds of questions you need to ask yourself when you're filming yourself because it may, it may not be that worth it, although it is nice to have your faster solves filmed and all that. I certainly have my share of like semi-regrets where I regret not having filmed something, namely probably my official 2x2 two two average, and there's probably a couple others that are maybe less notable, but still would have been nice to have them filmed, but it's not the end of the world that they weren't. So that's reason number one why not filming your solves, despite being fast, can be a sensible thing to do. Okay, another reason. So this is a bit of a more edgy controversial-ish reason, but I'm going to try and make it as, like, just try and make sense of it in the best way I can. So the second reason is, and this is more just an unfortunate byproduct, not actually the WTA's fault or anything, but the more world-class a solver that you are, so the closer you are to the highest echelon of solving, the more your solves are naturally going to be scrutinized for very minor things, and this can lead to devastating results. This is not I need to make this absolutely clear, this is not a complaint towards the WCA. This is not the WCA's fault. This is merely an unfortunate reality and a feature of many competitive hobbies and not just cubing, although it is very prominent within cubing. There are Facebook groups like Exploding WCA Results or whatever it's called. Basically, groups of cubers online who will spend their time looking at slow solves that have had penalties ignored and they will bring them to light. So because of groups like this and potentially other ones, this is becoming slightly less of an issue within cubing. However, it's not ever going to be enough. And the reason for that is ultimately as a cuber, chances are you're going to watch the want to watch the very faster solves. But then on average as a cuber, you're less likely to want to watch solves at your speed or slower than your speed because it'll just be less interesting for you. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means just naturally, no matter what, if you're a faster solver, you're going to get a lot more views, you're going to get a lot more scrutiny, and you're going to get a lot more people watching your solves. And this includes people that are on and operate within the WC. These people are cubers themselves, and they will watch solves for entertainment in their own time as well. So, if you think, for whatever reason... Okay, I won't, actually, I won't get into that first. I'll lastly mention that... Um, not wanting to have yourself scrutinized, that can be like another aspect of the, the mental pressure of filming yourself. So not just the mental pressures that come with like expectations, but also the mental pressures of, oh, this, this is on video. If something out of my control goes wrong enough, 
then I could get DNF'd somewhat unfairly because it's, you know, you got to do things by the book. So that's the last thing I want to mention on point two. But anyways, if you think fast cubers, and, and this is this, so everything I've mentioned so far is like addressing like lower level cubers, but not cubers who are like necessarily like dumb or anything, just maybe less experienced, less advanced, you know, less mature, which is fine. That just comes with age. This one's for the slightly dumber people. And I have no problem using that term because of what I'm about to say. If you think me or any other fast cuber not filming their solves is in any way suspicious or an indication of any foul play whatsoever, you are an idiot. Because there are real reasonable reasons to not want to put yourself under scrutiny, let alone under certain mental pressures or things of that nature. Or maybe you just don't want to have your solves on the internet because you don't want to have information about yourself on the internet. So there are many, many reasonable reasons Cubers may not want to film their solves, but I've gone over the most important two, at least I feel that would apply to most fast cubers. So it's really not a matter of fast cubers wanting to cheat by not filming, because firstly, cheating is relatively difficult to do to begin with, at least on your own. When you have friends, it gets a bit easier, but I'm not going to go into that because I've never done it myself. I'm just aware of how this works. But really, it's just... Fast cubers not wanting to film themselves and avoid the scrutiny is reasonable because there have been cases, for example, Max Park's 6x6 world record mean, a previous one that is, it was DNF'd because one of the solves, he turned on the camera during inspection, which according to a technicality in the regulations is against the rules and therefore DNF-able. What he did, objectively speaking, if you ask 99 out of 100 people involved with the WCA, they will tell you that it wouldn't have made a difference for a solve. In fact, depending on who you ask, having a camera on your table, just regardless of whether or not you start or stop it during inspection or before, by having that piece of technology on the table, most of the t theoretical, you know, electronic cheating methods that people think could happen by turning it on during inspection, just by having that piece of equipment on the table, it's probably pr possible to cheat that way. So, I don't know, it's just like... I, I'm not giving the WCA crap for this, but it's just like a very annoying feature of, you know, having a comprehensive list of regulations. And that's why, at least me personally, for the last couple of years, I've been very on and off with when I film solves. And this last year, especially in 2018, I've basically filmed nothing in comp because I don't care that much about YouTube views anymore, or at least not. And I also don't care that much about documenting official solves because in general, I'm really happy with what I've done with my career. And... Therefore, making the choice not to want to film solves and make uploading official solves a part of my routine is just a personal choice I've made, and it's really not that big of a deal. So, if you think it's a big deal for any reason, there is a very good chance that you are a neurotic cubing fanboy, and I probably find you annoying, and you're also probably dumb. So that's this ramble. Next video will actually be the Max Park case study series. Stay tuned.